The National Media Commission's district-level election monitoring suggests the media has given almost no attention at all to local elections due in March. But are media houses to blame? How would you feel if during the African Cup of Nations, your favorite TV, radio, or newspaper rather focused on reporting on district-level elections which are due two months away? What really are the dynamics that shape the angles or slants journalists give? to stories you hear. This is today's big story. Now, between January 12 and 23, the National Media Commission's media monitoring sampled and quantified the amount of time media houses dedicated to political parties and independent candidates in the ongoing district-level elections. It also conducted uh, an analysis on the agenda setting and identified the main topics that were covered by these media uh, houses. The outcomes were very interesting. I'll run you through some of the outcomes. That, for example, for the TV agenda, of news. Other topics attracted about 41% of airtime. Sports, events, and players attracted 12%. Labor issues, about 7%. And district level elections, just shy of 2%. Now, the data for radio and newspaper were similar. Uh, I'm going to get into the studio, uh, Malik Dabu, who is our uh, online news editor to join us in the discussion. But first, let's hear George Sapong, who is the Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission, and then we'll be right back. The, I, I think that the, um, we shift the debate when we shift it to NCC. NCC can only do that much. Again, the claim that media as business is also a very tricky conclusion to reach. There are certain kinds of businesses that we call businesses affected by, with public interest, okay? Schools, you can't run a school the way you would run a restaurant, okay? You can't run a hospital the way you would run a plywood business. Do you see the point? Every kind of business has its own orientation. So is media. Media devoid of public interest is useless. The fundamental interest of media is in, is in seven the public interest. It is business, but the business that we seek is for two things, to sustain the business, to sustain investment. But ultimately, the goal of media is to serve society. And so we need to strike a certain balance. Welcome back. This is uh, today's big story. Today's big story is brought to you by Lifeline Properties, affordable, quality, and comfortable housing. My name is Stephen Enti, and we're grateful. Uh, we're joined on the line now by Ransford Tete, who is uh, editor for the Daily Graphic. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time. Good evening. And uh, also, I'm fine, thank you. Also in the studio, we have Malik Dabu, who is uh, our online news editor for my journal line. How are you, sir? Now, we'll be engaging the two of you, both yourself and uh, Ransford Tete on the telephone. Let me start with you. Uh, this report that came out suggests, actually, that the media paid little attention to district-level elections, which are two months away. Is this something that media houses and journalists should feel bad about and be taking the blame? Absolutely not. I, I think that the results of the survey it's not surprising. What is surprising is the reasoning and the thinking that went into the decision mm. to, to, to do this survey at this time. The reason I'm saying this is, as you know, this is a time when the AFCON is going, AFCON 2015 is going on. Mm. We know that this is a sports nation. Mm. If AFCON is going on and you do a survey in January and you expect people to focus on district level elections, this is not national elections, mm. mind you. This, this is, is not I mean, this is presidential or parliamentary elections. We know that our presidential and parliamentary elections tend to generate excitement. Mm. That is not. It's not the case when it comes to uh, um, district-level elections. And especially when you have sports around the corner, 
it's difficult to understand why anybody will go and do a survey around and measure, the time and that, measure media mm. coverage of district level elections vis-a-vis -vis, uh, 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 AFCON and other exactly. I mean, at a time where all eyeballs will be on AFCON, for example, uh, I mean, we've got the the central medical stores on fire on for fire. some time, and then there is one in 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 Tamale as well, which caught fire. So, does it mean that when we balance the weight that we put on stories, we we make our own subtle considerations before we decide what becomes the headline? You know what? Before Mr. Tete joins us, you know. Um, our managing news editor, Elvis Kwashi, often mm. says that when it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. So you can have sports going on, you have fires all over the place, and you expect that somebody will go. Don't forget that what we are in the business of news, business and we sell news. the news. Mm. You give to the society what the society expects you to give them. Mm. How many people will take a newspaper, take the Daily Graphic, or listen to Joy News Channel, or read uh, Major Online, or listen to Joy News, and will be interested in the coverage of district level elections when there's sports going on, when there when are all these fires happening, and me, real lives mm. are affected here because medicine. That's what the it's issue critical. is. Medicine. Right. Medicine has been bent, and people's health is at risk. Right, let me go to Ransford. Um, Mr. Ransford, Tete, thanks for uh, your patience on the telephone. Now, I need to get a fair understanding as an editor of a reputable newspaper like the Daily Graphic. When you make consideration uh, about what to lead with, what do you think about? What influences your choices or what becomes a top story? Thank you very much. Mm. I, I think that... Uh, it, I, I listen to George very well, mm. uh, and he sounded well, and that is what is supposed to be, mm. really, we must lead national development mm. in, in our society. Mm. But, again, oh. uh, it's difficult at this time. The timing of the survey is what mm. uh, baffles me. Mm. I'm, I'm not surprised at all about the low level mark we scored for coverage of this level election. I mean, newspaper, you, we, newspaper we, you had just about uh, less than 0 0.5. That's, well, that's serious. Yes, it is. But you see, historically, this level elections does not uh, I mean, move uh, regionally. And, and, and indeed, it's not supposed to be like that. We've mm. got to change it. But it cannot just change at the time, and particularly when Afcon is on. Mm. Can you imagine mm. us putting something else when fire has virtually got at the central medical stores. All the mm. big stories are happening, and this level is elections. Mm. When the people who are even participating in the this level elections are not even talking about the elections. Exactly. Beyond the mm. posters that you see around, what else is, that, is happening? They're supposed to mount platforms for them. Has it happened? <laughs> so I don't know what the, 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 the media commission will want us to do at this time. Mm. I know. That it is a wake up call. We need to do something. Already we have been discussing it at our news conferences here in the office, finding out how best we can go around it. And again, you know that I mean, newspaper to, 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 to do business, and I cannot just put anything on the front pages of my paper. Mm -hmm. It will go to the market and return in, mm. in, in huge numbers to the office. And the workers so, will be looking, so looking so at me. So, what's so let's. let's Ransford, let me pause bri you briefly. I mean, does this mean really that commercialization is, is a key factor when we are determine, determining what to place as a top story? It, it plays a part, but I'm saying that if you don't consider that, mm. remember that you can put anything on the front pages of your newspaper. The radio stations will, will, will review it for you, mm. but will the readers make a purchase decision? That is key. Mm. That is the bottom line. I see. But as we do that, we mm. need to balance uh, the public interest with that of our business interest as well. So in doing so, when, 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 when the news is hot, you don't want to be part of it because there is a district level election around the corner. And therefore, you want to shelve fire uh, uh, in Tema and shelve AFCON. Mm. I mean, we, 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 if, you, if any time you walk to our office when the, the black stars are playing, we have a selfish interest at stake as well when we decide to support the black stars. Mm. Mm. Because when they are winning, people walk to the newsstands and want to buy the newspaper. If they lose, then I say nobody wants to tend to anything in this country. That's right. <laughs> I mean, so, mm. but I, I think that if they want us to tend to the, the, the district level election, I believe that the Electoral Commission, the NCCE, and the NMC itself, 
they also got to come together and team up with us as to how we can do it and ensure that people get interested in right, the uh, way election. Right, Mr. Ransom, we'll have you hold briefly, uh, get onto the other telephone lines and speak to Bernard Avle. Uh, Bernard is the director of news programming at City FM. I uh, we've lost Bernard. We'll bring him back onto the telephone. But, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tete, I'll, I'll return to you uh, in a moment. Uh, Malik, Ransford's uh, comments make sense. In a sense, uh, in a, he is saying that, for example, he cannot put anything on his front page. What he puts there must sell. So I'm asking you, is commercial interest driving relevant discourse out of the public space? No, I think he's not just talking about commercial interest. He's talking about interest generally. And as I said earlier, you know that when you, you are in TV, <clears> if <throat> you do your story and you look at the tracker and people are not reading the news, when you go out there, your measurement is how many people are following the news. Mm. Before you go on set, you normally put the topics for the day mm. on your Facebook page. Mm. And you look at how much interest that generates. Because you are serving a public mm. and you must serve their interests. You must, you, must, you must give them what they need, what they desire, what their interests are. That's what you must fulfill. You can't just do it because you want to do it. And I ask a question. Political parties are key actors in elections. I do know that the local government acts does not allow uh, partisanship in terms of uh, district level elections. Mm. But political parties have a key role to play. Has any of the political parties organized anything or said anything or held any press conference or said anything about these elections? Mm. The answer is no. So if the key actors in elections themselves do not find it necessary to hold press conferences. Then who are we to hold them by the scruffles of their necks to, to ask and, them and, to and, set their agenda for us? Can't. So they're refusing to set their agenda, making it look as if journalists are I, not interested. Absolutely. I, right. I think that mm. it, was, it was pretty misplaced to conduct this research at this at time. At this time. The timing the is critical. That, right. Uh, so Bernard Avle, who is the director of uh, news uh, programming at City FM, is joining us on the line now. Bernard, good evening, sir. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, for joining us, too. Now, we are discussing a very important issue, the National Media Commission uh, media monitoring of the district-level elections actually point to a very sad uh, situation. It exposes the fact that the media have not been keen or have been less interesting in, in, in covering the district-level elections. I want to ask you, as uh, the AFCON is ongoing, I do not want to premise it on the AFCON, but uh, it, within this period, January 12 and January 23, what is it that have made you, uh, City FM, not covered the district level elections vigorously as you would cover others like market fires and uh, the central medical stores fires, for example? Well, thanks for the question. Mm. Uh, first, I would want to say, in relation to research, before I answer the question directly, that mm. when somebody does research, we, I believe it's important to appreciate the context they are coming from mm. and pick out what is relevant in the research and analyze and discuss the whole entirety. Mm. Say this because the relation between media coverage and that street level elections and public interest in this. But whether you can move to the level of causality is a different issue. So it could be true that the media doesn't cover issues relating to district level elections well. But whether that's the only and the main reason why there's a low patronage or low interest is something we need a more rigorous approach to assess. Mm -hmm. But going to your question, I do not think the Africa Cup of Nations per se is the main reason why there's been low media coverage. There's always been low media coverage of digital level elections. Mm -hmm. And I can give you my reasons for it. Yeah. But within the period of Africa Cup of Nations, we've been covering other issues. For example, this whole week on my show, City Breakfast, we've been doing doom so in its own, all its manifestations, from power generation to availability of fuel, mm. to government promises, to its effects on people, which is the same issue. Which so, is also very pressing to national development, and it is actually a matter everybody would want to get some answers to. Exactly. So, so, so in my view, the reasons why the media doesn't seem to cover district level elections are about three main reasons. Number one, unlike national elections, where you have presidential and parliamentary voting, where there are issues that bind all your listeners or your viewers, 
every district has its own peculiar issues. Mm. So, for example, we can put Dumso on the national agenda or we can put the economy on the national agenda. And if you broadcast in Accra, listeners in Kumasi, Damongo, or Peki will relate. Mm. But for district level elections, if I'm focusing on Adenta, what does the person in Cherponi think? If I'm focusing on La Paz or I'm focusing on Achimota exactly. or Kruo, mm. what does the person in Asamankese think? The issues are not similar. They are not. Mm. Number two, because of the nature of centralized power, where the presidency and the executive is very powerful, more people think they can effect a change if they focus on national level elections exactly. than on district level elections. Mm. Our involvement or our lack of involvement in choosing, for example, who our MCE or DCE is, is a problem. I know somebody will argue that, yes, through the people we vote for who have to approve the president's nominee or otherwise, we are involved. But trust me, people are interested in the power at the top. So people don't relate to their MCE, partly mm. because it doesn't answer directly to them. Mm. There is no transparency in the way resources are used. Mm. People don't even know what is due them. What must my MCE or DC or unit committee member do for me? Ask your panelists how many of them have even gone for a unit committee meeting That's in right. the past month. It will be so you, you, you can look at media coverage and say yes, it's contributed. Mm. But there are deeper issues. You have a centralized power, power is not devolved. So people don't think that involving themselves in district level elections is where they are well. And final point, final mm. point. The, I, I want to say that the most effective organizations in mobilizing people in this country are political parties. Political parties. And exactly. possibly mm. possibly religious organizations. Mm. So the, the vehicle of an MPP or an NDC or even a CPP is able to rally people better and get them involved than simply having people campaign on their own individual platforms. It's not to say that people are obsessed with politics, but these parties have an organization and it drills down to the polling station level. It's a vehicle we cannot take lightly. Right. Now, in the mm. absence of that vehicle driving interest and organizing, it's very scattered. So there are communities where people mm. are concerned about what happens locally, and they'll get involved, like a few communities who will say, we don't have street lights, we don't have roads, we'll get together and organize. But Ghanaians are generally poorly organized, and they can't right. rally around issues well. So that translates into lack of interest in district-level elections. And so... The lack of political involvement is also it's a also factor. a contributing factor. Bernard, uh, we are grateful for your time on today's big story. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Bernard is uh, director of news programming at CTFM. We still have Ransford Teta, who is editor of Daily Graphic, on the line. So, Ransford, moving forward, we all agree that if we became a bit more interested in in local level elections, it is good. But from the analysis Bernard just made, it means that it doesn't just hinge. The responsibility doesn't lie only at the doorstep of media houses alone. Political parties must get involved, and even the citizens must get involved. So I also know that you are a former uh, GJA president. I want to ask you specifically what we can do different moving on to improve uh, interest in local-level elections. Of course, we have to be responsible for what we put out there. Thank you, my brother. But Bernard raised some issues that at least one of them is key for mm -hmm. me. How would a, a national media creep up enthusiasm in local elections? For instance, he said issues at even in Accra here at mm. La Paz may not be the same at Kukumembe. That's right. And therefore, uh, getting the na national media to be so involved in local elections becomes a problem when all of us, uh, excuse my language, not to insult anybody, mm -hmm. we bury our heads. <laughs> In sand and pretend that Nothing we can happened. run local elections <laughs> on non partisan basis. basis. That's right. Well, we know that there's no way we can mobilize people around local elections without the political party. So we, 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 we got to look at it we again. Got to look at but, it as, again. Uh, but as the media, I think that no matter how you look at it, media have a role to play in mobilizing people. Mm. And indeed, if we do not expect anybody else. To set the agenda for us. We have to After begin all, to set the, the agenda. The media has an agenda setting role. Right. Uh, and therefore, going forward, I think that we all need to step back, look at what we've done wrong in the past or not properly in the past, and, 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 and re strategize going forward so that at least come this March 3rd, majority of our people will turn out to vote.
for district assembly members. Right, uh, Ramsel Tete, we are grateful that you could join us on today's big story. So, Malik, uh, here we are. Yeah, okay. So, fact is, journalists and the media do not contest elections. That's right. That's known. We don't contest elections. So, we are not key actors. We only report on what others do. Mm -hmm. So, if the people conducting elections or the people who are contesting elections are active, we will report on their activities. Exactly. If they are not and they are dormant, apart from seeing a few um, posters on rickety trotter vehicles and things, I haven't seen much mm. happening. This week I have done a story on the uh, elections. I posted a story and I actually attached a, a video that the local, uh, the minister for local government sent me. I attached it and it was published. Beyond that, there was nothing much there happening. There was nothing much happening. And we do not create stories. We report on things that happen. happen. If nothing much is happening, there's nothing much to report on. And so the blame cannot, as you rightly put it, be put at the doorsteps of the journalists. Journalists alone, right. Uh, Erika Hianyo is the uh, news editor of uh, Metro TV. He's also joining us by telephone. Eric, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. So we are not covering the district level elections very well. I mean, it's not the first time that we've heard that district level elect elections do not uh, generate heated media interest. Uh, should we be sitting back and thinking we've shirked our responsibility as journalists? I, uh, I have two answers. One, yes, we have a role to play. Mm. And we've not done that effectively as the public expects. Mm. But I think that there are stakeholders who are first paid to do their jobs. Mm. And then there are other related agencies like the CDD, IEA, and then the uh, other gender advocate groups, which have always spoken, especially on the role women can play mm. at a local level. Other speakers on your platform have already spoken to the fact that we report on what has happened. That's Our true. role is basically to inform and educate. We mm. investigate stories and report. But what does the public want? The public seems to be interested in sensational stories. So if I have a media platform, my focus will be to report on what is happening or issues that will be of interest to the public. Otherwise, I will not get the viewership mm. if it's television or for listeners, if it is radio or if it is newspaper, people may not buy your paper, your, your paper and read. And for that reason, you may not get the revenue you want to run your media house. So the focus is to report on what is happening. I don't understand why the Electoral Commission, for example, applies for about 327,000 cities as a budget to run the local election and the referendum that is expected. And then Parliament approves about 140,000 cities. What has the Electoral Commission done? My tax is being used to pay the Commission to carry out its mandate. For example, at the beginning of this year, I wanted to send an agenda. I did three stories. One focus on how we can gauge the public interest mm. in the pending election. Obviously, the answer was clear, that people had apathy. What was the reason? Maybe we'll discuss it as the discussion, as the interview goes on. Goes on. The mm. second one was to look at women, if they are really interested in the election. And then it became obvious that people said they are not even aware of what will happen mm. on March 3rd. The third was to go to the electoral commission and find out from them what strategy have you put in place to educate the public, mm. to whip up interest in what is happening? All they said was, in February, that is next month, some yes. days away, they are going to create platforms for candidates to market themselves. to And that, uh, and that, and that will obviously be just a month uh, before the actual elections. Eric, I'm, yes, I'm afraid that our, our time has run out and we have to just uh, wrap up our conversation. But we're grateful that you, you, you made very interesting inputs into our discussions. Thanks very much. So, uh, Malik, let, let, let's, let me take some points that uh, Eric raised and then uh, Bernard Avila also raised the same issue. You also uh, mentioned it. Now, do you think na now, from the look of it, that it's time that we considered uh, making the local level elections a political activity? It, it, it does not lie with us. It lies with those who have the mandate to do so. It does not lie with it. Critical, let's ask the question. Mm. If Mr. George Sapon was the editor of Major Online, or was the editor of Daily Graphic, would he put the district level elections on the front page of the Daily Graphic? Or would he do that on Major Online? Or would he make it a top story for discussion on Joy News, Joy FM, or Joy News Channel, Multi TV? He, I doubt if he would no, do that. No, against something else, maybe he would. Maybe if that is against uh, 
something less important, then it will take precedence. Uh -huh. and, and we all know that when it comes to news, nearness is important. Timeliness is also key. Absolutely. So there's no reason why we should be talking about district level elections that will be in March. That's when the elections will be conducted. When there are more urgent matters now, people are sleeping in darkness, mm. uh, medical stores are going up in flames, black stars are hoisting the nation's flag out there. There's no way we can shelve these matters and talk about elections that are months away. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. So we are interested in the local elections, but Absolutely. two months away, when Afghan is here, no, we, you, we question why the research was actually put around this but time. But frankly, mm. frankly, when was the last time you heard anything about your assemblyman? Do you even know them? I, I just saw a poster in my area, and <laughs> I remember that, oh, I know this guy in my church. That's about all. When was the last time at the at that level mm. that assembly members decided that a certain action being undertaken by the government's appointee which is the dc mm. or the uh, metropolitan chief executive or the municipal chief executive that an action the person was taking was wrong mm. and that these people held the person accountable and they ensured that money was not wasted mm. you have followed the public accounts committee yes. settings and all the the horrifying stories about misapplication of funds what do the assemblies do? What do assembly men do, assembly men and women? What actions do they take? Do they protect the national interest? Even if those, they do, we don't get to know. Precisely. Those are key questions to ask. So if the person is not acting in a manner that is in the interest of the public, at least you do not see the person to be acting in that manner. How can the media be interested in how the person gets elected into office in the, in the first place? Right, Malika, we are grateful for your time. Malik Davo is our own uh, online editor for myjoyonline.com. Thanks to you all for joining the discussion. Uh, Bernard Avle and uh, Ransford Tete joined us. We made an attempt to get uh, uh, George Sapong, who is the executive secretary of the National Media Commission. We couldn't raise him. We wanted to put some of the questions back and forth to him, but we couldn't get him. Thanks for staying with us. We'll be right back with an interactive segment. Do stay.